Oh. This week's video comes inspired by this big boy right here. Hey, hey, who's the big boy? <laughs> All right, fine, don't be in the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. This week's build is a straight up recycling bin project. I'm gonna use some cat food cans and a cookie box and some paper and a Q-tip and a pin. That's really, that's it, right? Little bit of foam core. It is a straight up desperation quarantine build that just about anybody can do with stuff in their kitchen bin. I was looking through the recycling and realized one of the things that we have in abundance are cat food cans. Because we have a cat and he eats every day. He's a big boy. He always eats so, so much. And I figured, well, let's see if I can make something with them. And I figured giant ale barrels. I don't know, seemed like a fun idea. I played around looking for ideas, what to do, how to orient them, and eventually figured going rim to rim was the best. Harder to glue them this way, but it meant that the ends would be closed and the wider section in the middle with those little rims there would actually probably work well for the shape of a barrel. I just used hot glue and this was pretty tricky actually as there wasn't much surface area and the hot glue cooled pretty quickly. And I learned that you only get one shot for alignment. If you try to adjust your positioning, you're gonna have a bad time. Since this was a recycling bin sort of build, I decided to use the cardstock wood plank method instead of foam. I have a whole video explaining this in more detail that I'll link in the info cards and video description if you wanna see how to do it. The one thing I did differently this time though is that I made all straight cuts with no wavy ones. Since this was for a barrel, overlapping wavy planks wouldn't really make sense. They needed to be straight and butted together. The sides of these barrels is where things started to get tricky. A defining feature of every good barrel is that it's wider in the middle than at the top. They have this very distinct shape and the straight cat food can it really, really wouldn't work. I needed to find a way to get this kind of barrel shape to make them look even remotely like believable barrels. The wider ridge in the middle versus the bottoms of the cans would actually create a nice tapering effect, but it would leave a gap under the cardstock and the cardstock would not be strong enough to bridge that. I mean, it would, but it would just flex every time you grabbed it. I needed a way to fill that space, but it would have to be done in a way that retained that sort of taper. Now, if you're building these and are really desperate for materials, you could do this with uh, cardboard part of the way up, then fill that much smaller little triangle with something like paper or cardstock. I wasn't quite that desperate and I still do have a fair bit of foam core on hand, so I went with that. Now the nice thing about foam is that it can be tapered into a bit of a wedge here by following the two metal points of the can. I first did this with an Ulfa knife and it worked pretty well. I figured, hey, why not try a hot wire? You could do this with a handheld or tabletop cutter, but to be honest, I actually found that the knife surprisingly worked better. It was easier, and I think that's mostly because you end up cutting through a fair bit of hot glue. However, I did make one big mistake, something that some of you have probably already caught onto. Maybe some of you have even already commented telling me I made this mistake before watching the rest of the video. I see you, Train Daddy 74. For some dumb reason, I never removed the paper labels from the cans. I guess I assumed they were well bonded, but that was a really poor assumption. The paper was just wrapped around and then spot glued, so it ended up coming off completely along with my foam on one of them. So if you're gonna build something like this, don't do what I did. First, remove the labels. With the foam filler in place, it became pretty easy to place the strips of cardstock. One single line of hot glue, top to bottom, for every piece. To help with the look and also to ensure the planks didn't just pop off, 
I used three strips of regular construction paper to simulate iron bands and a bit of Mod Podge to hold everything together and seal all the paper. This is really important since the painting process will hydrate the cardstock and could cause a lot of problems. So you really wanna make sure it's all sealed up nicely, especially the gaps in between the boards so you don't hydrate the backside of the chipboard. You could also use plain watered down PVA glue for this in a pinch if you have to. Now, I'm not gonna show you the step-by-step -step guide for painting this wood because I have shown that multiple times on this channel. And if you've missed all those examples and you need a refresher, that cardstock plank video that I mentioned earlier that I linked everywhere shows the painting process for this exact same type of wood plank. I wanted these to have a pour spout or tap on them to give them some scale and indicate that they are actually barrels of ale. To create a bent pipe, I used a plastic cotton swab stem over a candle. Using toothpicks to hold it and a lot of patience, I was able to get a pretty decent 90 degree bend. Patience is absolutely key here. My first try, I instantly ruined by getting it too hot too fast. And to make these pipes look more like a proper spigot and less like just a random pipe, I used the head of a small pushpin poked it through the plastic and super glued it in place. A bit of brass metallic paint and these were ready to install. Using a pin vise, I hand drilled a small hole in the chip stock so they weren't just surface mounted. This would make them a little bit more durable. I didn't try to drill through the metal can as that would take too much force and I really didn't want to break this thing in the process as it was mostly held together with hot glue, hopes and well, prayers. Let's be honest. This is a pretty ridiculous project. I'm not sure it's something I would have built just because I wanted to, but it was fun going down the path of building something, well, just because I had some junk on hand and I wanted to see where it led me. These don't look amazing, and I'm not gonna pretend that they do. I wouldn't use them for a fancy diorama or anything, but for tabletop RPGs, they look more than good enough. Plop them down on some tiles for a little brewery heist adventure, and everyone playing is gonna think they're pretty darn cool. I mean, I think they're kind of cool. They're, they're definitely fun and something different and interesting to use in your gaming. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I hope it was inspiring for you and you got something out of it to give you some motivation and creative juices to build something with whatever you have on hand. Just don't, you don't necessarily have to make these, just dig through that recycling bin and see what gives you inspiration. If you did enjoy the video, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section below. And if you are really feeling like you've really limited yourself on crafting supplies and you've run out, don't go out to the store right now to grab any. Use uh, online shopping. It's a lot safer in these times. Check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have links to all of the stuff that I use and recommend, and you can order it, and get it delivered safely from the comfort of your home. Don't even have to take your sweatpants off. If you enjoy these videos that I make each and every week and you wanna help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. By doing so, you get to join the Black Magic Craft Fellowship Facebook group, as well as the Discord server, and you get to help me help the community by making these videos. Thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you have a good rest of your week. I will see you again next week. Cheers.